We are headed to the canal. Brothers Bay Canal, Cape Cod Canal. I don't actually even know the proper term for this canal, but we're headed there this morning. We've done it a few times. It cuts off a big chunk of time instead of having to go all the way around the Cape to P-Town. We're headed to uh, Provincetown, also known as P-Town. We're gonna anchor there, do some whale watching, hang out, relax, recoup for a couple days, and then down to Nantucket. And then the adventure gets real. So uh, that's the plan for right now. We're, it's like 6.15. We're heading out of Marion so we can time the canal so we have the current pushing us. Let's go. I'm Brooke and this is Brayden. We have two kids and two dogs, Rooney, Penn, Frazier, and Captain. At 75 tons and 55 feet long, our home is different. With time being non-renewable and our home being, well, movable, around the world we go as we roam to know. Welcome aboard, Mermaid Monster. Could get much worse. that you have to do anything, right? No, they're all tall enough for us. Not for sailboats, but for us it is. Yeah. Um, and we're, yeah, it'll be a good day. We're, we're hitting the end of, the end of, I don't know if it's ebb or. Well, doesn't it, ebb. doesn't it swap around around 9.30? Yeah, so we're hitting, the current will be with us for the first little bit and then it's gonna go against us, unfortunately. But we didn't want to wake up any earlier. Because then we're tired. Because then we're tired and then when we get there we can't do anything. Yeah. So I'm driving and Rooney's doing her school. So we are kind of tag teaming. I told her she can get school done first thing in the morning. Then you don't have to worry about it. That's the beauty about being organized. And uh, you have to be pretty darn organized on when you live on a boat. 
organized but very flexible because uh, schedules change a lot. So if you're someone that can't comprehend like not really knowing what you're gonna do in the next few hours all the time, boat life might be a little challenging for you. You can have as much of a routine as you want. It just never ends up working out that way. Uh, but yeah, more like how we do it is we have a list of things that we need to get done in the week and we try to check them off in that week instead of like day to day. Or we have, a, I have a running list on my phone of day, daily things I need to get done. Sometimes they get moved, they're in order of priority. So that's a, a little tip and advice when you live on a boat. Now no other traffic in the canal over 65 feet. And you can give me another call when you exit Hog Island Channel into Buffalo. That's only 11.2. To us, we were absolutely flying in this canal. We were going like over 11 knots, which is like lightning speed for our boat. And to be honest, I didn't think we'd be here again, but here we are. You do really have to pay attention, don't you? Yeah, you do. We're it's going. Boat anchor. Oh, yeah, there's Rome. You can see him back in there. Oh, yeah? We got it. Yeah, they're all the way back in there. Oh, there they are. I just have to warn you guys to saddle up because Brayden has had one too many Red Bulls today. He is absolutely on one, but enjoy his commentary. But, uh, Brayden's on one today. Right. Is it recording? There we go. So um, last time Dan and I went by the Maritime Academy, I got like uh, more than one photo of our boat going through because I think some someone at the Maritime Academy saw the boat, recognized it, found our email and sent it, which is really, really cool. But that, this is a, an awesome, an awesome school over here and they have some really, some cool boats. Brooke says I say really too much, so I gotta figure out a different word, but they have some very cool boats. I don't think that was any better. There's the canal patrol. He waved to me, which is always good. It means you're not in trouble, right? All right, we're going through the Cape Cod Canal right now, but we just saw our buddies Rome right over here in Onset. The last time we saw Rome was, what, what's that beach that we were on? Stanley? Uh, Stanley? No. The Hog Beach? What's the, what's the big beach? Uh, big Majors. Big Majors, yeah. The last time we saw them was in Big Majors. Um, and we'll run into them again, but it probably won't be here. It'll probably be in a totally different state like a month from now. Probably run into like North Carolina or Annapolis or something like that. We always run into the same boats over and over again. I think there's probably like 500, 600 boats or something like that that do this um, every single year. And you start to memorize them a little bit. So you'll find the same boats all over the place. What do you That's think? True. Yeah. I'd be interested to see what people think in the comments how many people are actually like actively cruising on their boat and. Uh, and in the world, in the U.S.? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's as many as you think there is. I really don't think there is. Probably not. Because we still run into all the same ones. And the same mega yachts we keep on running into, too. Yeah. Um, We're on the same route. Look at the Maritime Academy. I know. I'm, is that boat turned on? Is that like a wash? Crop wash? So Brooke thought there might be prop wash coming out from the back of the boat, but it's all current. There's some moorings on the other side. You see the moorings over there? There's some moorings over here that Malcolm was gonna try to get us to take. But there's no way you're getting one of those. All right, bro, let's play a boat in the canal, okay? All right, let's, what'd I say? Let's play a boat? Let's play a game in the canal. Are you ready? What's that? All right, the game is, you gotta tell me how fast you can Say the boat manufacturer Gosh, of the boats coming why by. Are we still rocking? Because you got a little waves. How fast the what? You got to tell me what the boat manufacturer is of the boat oncoming. Got to tell me what kind of boat it is. So when there's a boat coming up, you got to tell me first what kind of boat it is. You got it? Sure. So we're kind of hitting standing waves, huh? Yeah. It just makes me a little nervous about what we're going to see when we come out. Standing waves. 
So there's definitely some standing waves that are just bobbing us around going through here. I don't know if you can see, but that bow just is going up and down like you're on a quarter ride in front of the barber shop. And you're fine. How's the Fleming? How's it? Oh, uh, thank you. All right, see this running trail behind me? I don't know why, but I have like this urge to just run this trail. It goes on that side, and then it also goes over here on this side over here. If anyone knows how long, or if there's any way to do a loop, it seems like a good trail, like a 10 to 15 mile loop or something like that. And you get to see all these uh, neat boats along the way. Because a lot of boats come through here. I would love to have a house that overlooked this because you'd see all the boats that just come through on a regular basis. Everyone comes through here. Everyone does. You'd, this is like the, the, the choke point for all the cool boats right here. It'd be amazing. Hey Brooke, we're, you know what's the best thing about this boat right now? What? Or fall. But it makes me feel good. No fuel concerns at all. How, what did, how low did we get down to? Oh man, how many gallons did we have left? You said, I don't know. Like 350? That sounds like a lot, but that's not, I don't, that's not what not I'm comfortable with. Not when you with. can hold 2,000 more. You know what the best thing is about getting that much fuel? Is Chris gives you a jacket. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> what can I got to get a jacket? Thanks, Chris. The, wait, why don't you think you got a jacket? I don't know. I'm not cool enough. I don't think uh, Chris, there's, yeah, it's still, is there, I'd ask, we you should ask, out. we should ask Chris if there's any, if there's any female gas, what is, what is, what is the, what is the title of that job? I don't know, I guess I don't know what it is, but, uh. Right up here is Sandwich Marina, and this is kind of a good stopping point if you want to go through the canal, but the problem is we were going to stay in here last night um, with some friends, but uh, the current wasn't right when we were coming in and the friends are like oh it's fine just grab your way right in and it just seemed uh something like we didn't want to do if it wasn't timed right we probably could have done it i'm sure we could have done it but it did uh and i'll tell you what the real reason is it's like 350 a foot which i understand for all you upper east coast guys that seems like a really inexpensive price but that's a lot. That's a lot. We're going to, I'm going to uh, Nantucket in a little bit. It's only $2 a foot um, because it's the end of the season, but that seemed like a heck of a deal. Never mind. doesn't look that bad. I'm sure you could get in fine. What I'm a little interested in though is why right here are there all these pilings? Is someone tie up there or is that a hazard that people are trying to avoid? Why right there? There's none anywhere else. Just right back there there's like eight pilings coming out of the water to either tie up to but probably to protect you from going into the, the seawall right there, or to the, the rocks I guess.
What are you doing? Watching a movie? No. And look at all the mess you made. Well, I have to. I did it because I have to send you. How long have I been here for? I don't know, but you also got all the stuff out so that you could make your space in there. And I found a lot of stuffed animals. But are you going to put it all away? Are you going to make this normal or is this going to be just like this forever? It's going to be like this forever. Brooke? Yeah. Penn took all of his stuffed animals, threw them out, and now he made a secret hideout out of the cabinet. I saw that. I'm gonna find him until I looked in there. Oh my goodness. So normally we encourage the kids to watch movies when we're underway. This makes it so that there's less mess to clean up. Um, but that clearly backfired on this one because he had to make his movie hideout, which made a huge mess and there's stuff all over. Came into P Town and we got a load of groceries. It's overflowing and we have a problem because the bottom's wet. But I don't want to unpack it until we get on the boat. You think it's okay? I, I, I tasted a little bit and it didn't taste like anything. So I'm hoping it's condensation. As always, thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, give us a like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And of course, leave a comment below. We love to hear from you. We will see you all next week for more adventures.